Hi, uh, Pastor Hal here on uh, February 18th. It's Friday, a little bit afternoon. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a uh, daily word of encouragement and Sunday worship preview, but I uh, thought what better time than right now. Getting ready to jump into a new sermon series uh, starting this Sunday. Uh, be a 12 week uh, series on the nine traits of an outwardly uh, focused Christian. Uh, I will. Uh, it's a t- book by Tom Rayner, and we'll be looking uh, through. Those 12 weeks, you might wonder if it's nine uh, traits, why are we doing 12 weeks? Well, the first four weeks are going to be looking at some very foundational, attitudinal things that we need to look at, uh, sort of I am. I, I am and I will be. So before we can do, we actually have to be. And so we'll be looking at four key attitudes of a, a Christian uh, that's outwardly focused, and then we'll jump into the Uh, other eight uh, traits uh, of an outwardly focused Christian. I hope you'll make plans to be with us uh, either in person or online. Uh, We're still broadcasting Facebook Live at 1045 on Sunday mornings live uh, and 815 and 1045 in person. Uh, Of course, most of you probably, if you live in New Mexico, have heard as of yesterday uh, the governor lifted uh, the mask mandate for indoor uh, gatherings. That's a good thing moving moving forward in a positive direction. Uh, but as we continue moving forward, uh, sort of post-COVID, if you will, uh, as a church, uh, to come back together and say, what does it mean to be a member of First Baptist Church of Carlsbad, New Mexico? What does it mean uh, to, to be a biblical and joyous Christian, And so we're going to be looking at that over the next 12 weeks, and I hope that you will uh, make every effort to be with us uh, in person, if at all possible. And if you're out of town, sick, not able to make it, obviously join us online, but uh, we would love for you to gather with us um, in person if you're here in the Carlsbad area. You know, we've been through a lot over the last two years, um, individually, as families, as a church, um, as a nation as a world and so uh, we know that even over these last two years God has always been faithful God will continue to be faithful uh, to his people and to his church and so as we look together what does it mean uh, to be a biblical joyous Christian and what does it mean to be a biblical joyous member of the local church and so how can Uh, do that together. We'll be jumping right in uh, on Sunday with what I believe is uh, really one of the most important attitudes that we can have. I I won't won't give it away, but folks, it's what uh, churches need, it's what families need, it's what sports teams need, it's what businesses need. Uh, Without this, you can have all of the the, uh, people in the world that have all of the talent in the world But if you don't have this one key ingredient, and and ultimately it's an ingredient and it's a characteristic, it's an attitude uh, that we've been already given, and and Scripture just tells us that we're supposed to keep hold of it. And so it's fragile, uh, but we've already been given it in Christ, and so we need to keep hold of it. And so you you make plans to to be with us on Sunday. You'll hear uh, what that is. But uh, as we uh, kind of transition and hopefully turn a corner, um, not only in our church life, but in uh, America, as uh, COVID restrictions are hopefully lessening and as we're getting back, I'm not going to call it a new normal. We can't really go back, but we can go forward in Christ. And someone once said not too long ago uh, that really every day is a renewed normal in Christ. And so uh, every day as believers, we're have a renewed normal. Yesterday is gone. We can't get that back. And so maybe uh, you didn't walk as closely with the Lord yesterday as you wanted to. Today's a new day. And so we can be renewed in Christ. And, and in fact, Ecclesiastes tells us uh, that God's mercies are what are new every morning. So I don't know about you, but I need those new mercies every morning. And so yesterday is gone. We can't uh, worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is not yet here, but we can have a renewed uh, day in Christ today. Uh, a favorite passage of Scripture of mine, and I want to share it uh, this afternoon, comes from First Peter chapter 5, uh, verses 10 and 11. Peter kind of knew something about uh, suffering. Peter uh, was always right there, seemed like with the, the right answer so many times in Scripture uh, when Jesus said, who, who do you say that I am? He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus said, right, blessed are you, uh, Simon, son of Jonah. And, and he was so right, but yet... And at the end of Jesus' life, Peter would deny even knowing Jesus three times the last time, would begin to curse. I don't know the man. Uh, we'd be restored by, by Jesus and would go on to have uh, such an impactful ministry in the New Testament. Uh, but I believe these verses here in First Peter chapter 5, verses 10 and 11 can speak to us individually, can speak to us as a church 
can speak to us even as families, as a nation. Hear what Peter writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace. I love that. The God of all grace. Our God is the God of grace. What is great? Grace is unmerited favor, undeserved favor. We simply don't deserve it. We, in fact, deserve the opposite of it, but yet he gives us his grace, the God of all grace. That's what's so amazing about God's grace. It's simply not deserved. There's nothing that we can do to earn it, but yet God gives it to us. And so the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. Well, we've been called in Christ. And so if you're in Christ, if you have the salvation that comes in through Jesus Christ, you've been called by the God of all grace and all glory in and through Jesus Christ. Notice this precious promise. Will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. You know, we all go through, and you probably hear some of my buddies back here. I don't know if you can see them back there, but I've got couple dogs out here with me enjoying this beautiful New Mexico uh, winter day, just uh, about 52 degrees outside, beautiful blue skies. You know that God has created that, the God of all grace has created that. But notice what he says, will his self, what, restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. God is a God of restoration. God is a God of, uh, of establishing and strengthening and supporting. God is a God of renewal each and every day. God is a God uh, of just revitalization in your, in your spiritual life and in the life of the church. And so maybe you've been struggling even uh, this, this year, 2022. And, and folks, I will tell you, it seemed like at the end of 2020, we said 2021, that's going to be the year. And, and maybe it wasn't. And then we got to uh, 2022, and so that's going to be the year. And already in the first couple months of 2022, it's not exactly what uh, you had anticipated or, or wanted. And maybe you have been suffering a little while, but yet God himself says, I will restore you. I will establish you, I will strengthen you, and I will support you. Folks, we, it can't get any better than that. God is a God of all grace. And today we need his grace more than ever. In fact, he, he invites us to boldly come before his throne of grace each and every day. In fact, even throughout the day. And maybe right now, that's exactly what you need to do is come before God's throne of grace. What to receive that mercy that's new each morning and grace to help in time of need. And as a church, and as a church family at First Baptist Church, Carlsbad, New Mexico, as we continue to move forward in 2022 and all that God has for us, uh, might we uh, know that he is going to continue. Uh, to uh, restore, establish, strengthen, and support us. He'll do that same thing for you in, in your life. Uh, and so I, I would encourage you uh, to look to the God of all grace today uh, for his mercy and for his grace, uh, for his help each and every moment of each and every day. And I would encourage you, as part of the church, particularly if you're a member of First Baptist Church Carlsbad, or you consider First Baptist Church Carlsbad, New Mexico, your church home, I would encourage you to be in your spot this Sunday. Come and, and be a part of what God continues to do in, in and through the people known as First Baptist Church of Carlsbad, New Mexico. If you're not in the area, and I know we've got a lot of folks, including my uh, mom and stepdad and, and others and that are different parts of the country that watch, and that, that's great. Uh, but if you're here and you're physically able to get here on Sunday, I would encourage you. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe, maybe you need to call somebody and say, hey, uh, you need to come back, and we want you to, to come back. And so we would encourage you. Well, let's, let's do this together and see what the God of all grace will do in your life and in my life, the life uh, of his children, the life of his church, as we continue to make an impact in this community, in this world, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day in the Lord. Be, be healthy, be safe. And we look forward to seeing you this Sunday. God bless you.